So here it is, the last one of the year. And one that I can't really say I I care because it's this middle road where it's like everything all right let me put it this way so I've had a lot of complaints over the past three generations and these complaints haven't been mitigated and it comes to the point where I ask them to be mitigated again but this isn't a full game this is a side game as the full true generation is coming on the Switch next year. So I could sit here and criticise all its problems and all its failures and everybody will be like, yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's a spin-off. What's it, what's it fucking matter? And it's like, you're right. There's, there's nothing I can really do because I would like to say that, for example, the whole customization of the character, the clothing... That was a good idea, and they've never truly flushed it out. Here it's gone completely, which to me is a downgrade. Yeah, but it's, it's a side game. It's just a remake of, of Red and Blue. It's a side game. It doesn't matter. If you want the full customization, wait till the next generation. So it, it kind of comes to me on this review as... I have complaints, but can, I, can these complaints be carried over... I mean, in reality, it wasn't that much of a good idea to base an entire series off a mobile app, and that's why it's called Let's Go, as it is a pseudo-sequel slash pseudo-remake to Pokemon Yellow slash Pokemon Go. Uh, there are big complaints that nobody can defend, even if people think they can, they are absolutely wrong, and I will debunk those in a minute, but let's start with the things that are absolutely fantastic about the game, which are the graphics, they are they are exactly what I suspect the new generation will look like. They finally, now it being a game on the Switch and not the 3DS, added the lineless mod, which was, you know, always there, but apparently the 3DS couldn't handle it, even though it definitely could, and we all saw modders mod it in, and it was working perfectly fine on the DS. But... Here we are on the Switch with the lineless mod, and the game looks bloody stunning. It looks absolutely amazing. All of the Pokemon look great lineless. Most of the world, like the tall grass, looks great lineless. So, please, I get that this is a side game, Pokemon Company, but please keep the lineless mod. Don't make a bullshit excuse for the main series, because now that you have actually properly fully implemented the lineless mod that's your standard please don't regress the other is the music for the most part again the routes are are fine you know the routes the towns they're nice music but the battle music is still the same it gets very repetitive and it's the problem that the Pokemon series has suffered with uh, throughout its run in terms of battles. Battles only have two tracks, which is a regular track, which is the one that you hear most of the time when you're battling a regular trainer or a wild Pokemon. And then a elite track where you're battling a gym leader, your rival, the elite four... Uh, and so on, so or like Giovanni in the Celadon City or the Saffron City. So there's only really two battle tracks, and considering 90% of the game is going to be battling trainers and wild encounters, the music, the battle music gets very, very repetitive because, again, the Pokemon Company really does need to make some sort of mixtape of different battle themes to not get as stale as quickly because by the time I got to the fourth city I just ended up muting the game I couldn't take the same repetitive battle music again for another fucking game and it was just like right time to mute and put on my own music 
So yeah, they they need in the in the new generation they really need to not have just one single battle track or two battle tracks. They need a, a full medley, you know, like Deltarune that has a a full medley of tracks for different fights. But yeah, that's uh that's fine. The music's good, the graphics are good. The gameplay and the controls are where everybody's going, it's just, it's just a fucking spin-off. It's just a spin-off. Why, why are you criticising it? It's not the full game. Well, I, I had to pay $40 for the fucking ball. No, you didn't. It was optional. Well, not optional. But, yeah. So, the, uh, the gameplay is where it falls apart and the control is where it somewhat falls apart but somewhat excels. So, that is the Pokeball Plus and we'll come to the DLC practice in a moment. But the Pokeball Plus is a little tiny Pokeball. It fits really comfortably in the palm of your hand. Feels really, really nice. And when you are walking around, you use the the little stick that is the center of the Pokeball to move around. And then you press it in for A, which is a uh, interaction. And it all it all feels very nice and very natural. And as I say in my first impressions, it's got a very very advanced motion sensor. So it's so much better than the Joy-Con because I tried the throwing with the Joy-Con and with the Pokeball. And with the Joy-Con, it just spazzes out. It, the ball goes wherever it wants. It's it's horrible. It's just terrible. But with the Pokeball Plus, despite it being motion-based, it is just this, this nice little extra piece of immersion where you just throw the... You let the ball go from your hand because it's attached to this wrist strap. You let the ball go from your hand and it'll, it'll go to the Pokemon. So it does add that extra layer of immersion, like throwing the ball. And I felt when I was throwing the ball, like physically letting it leave my hand, it felt a lot more accurate. And even when I was just kind of holding it and not letting it be released from my hand, the, the ball did feel a lot more accurate than the Joy-Con. The ball did seem to have a lot more uh, motion sensitivity than the Joy-Cons. And that's great, but in menus, oh dear god. This is me just trying to feed... I'm going to let you see the full thing. This is me just trying to feed Eevee with the Pokeball Plus and using the static motion controls, not the actual motion motion of throwing the ball. Oh my god, the, 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 the control on this is absolutely abysmal. <laughs> I want to... Come... <sighs> hey guys, do you remember the... <laughs> do you remember the Wii? Yeah, yes, thank you. Do, do you remember the Wii? Where, where, where's it gone? Where's the hand gone? Do you, do you remember how fun it was to, to... What am I doing? Where's the ball? <laughs> I, I, I swear I'm not doing this on purpose. Like, holy fuck. Because, the, like, there's no sensor on the Pokeball to... to is it the eye? Is it the eye of the ball? No, the eye of the ball's over there. Over here? I wish you could actually see me, like... I can see Eevee saying, like, Oh, it's on the left, it's on the right, but, like, I can't make the ball go up. Right, let's... Central. Up. 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 Up! Oh, we had, we had it on screen for a second there. Holy fucking hell. Oh! Where's the hand gone in gen... Do I have to... Po well, I can't point him up. What would pointing it at your PC monitor do? 
What are you expecting? Pointing at your PC monitor all day. Like, switch. Okay, switch. Up. Up. Left. Up. Up. We had the hand for a second. Down. I, I literally... Can we reset the hand? Reset the hand. Please. <laughs> Please! Please! Uh, it's, it's there! Please! No! Please. Please. Uh, please! Wingardium Leviosa! Oh, there was the hand! It works! It's not Leviosa! It's Leviosa! Wingardium Leviosa! Oh, stop it, Ron! Stop it! <laughs> this is harder than the Elite Four. Yeah. Please, please. Welcome to so welcome to the next three hours of the stream while we try and do motion controls. Hey, you know our oh, motion controls are really good in every game. It's always great to, to have a fucking motion control bollocks. <sighs> Come on. Please. Please. Please Oh, oh I I was gonna try and get the banana to be to make a to make a Molly joke, but I'll take anything. Just, just let me out! Let me out! I gotta feed it. It won't let me go till I'm pressing B. I'm pressing B. It won't let me go till I feed the Eevee. Oh, oh, oh. It won't let me go till I feed it. This is. Uh, please, no, no, no! Don't go away. Please, please, take the pineapple. Oh, no. Come, come, come on. Come on. No. Please. Grab, grab it, grab it, grab the pineapple. No. Please. Oh, it's, it's actually hurting my arm. Like, I, I'm having to twist my arm in such a fucking awkward way to make this work. Wait, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Wait, what? The rotation? Is it the rotation of the ball that's making the motion control work? Or am I just talking shit? Because I'm rotating the ball and Eevee's moving its head. Down. Up. Rotate this way. This way. Up. Down. Shake it all around. Do, 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 do. Fucking hell. One eternity later. Yeah, it fucking will be with this. Oh my god. Like, I'll admit, the Pokeball bit is kind of fun. Like, when you're actually throwing a Pokeball, it's a lot more immersive than the, than Let's Go, uh, than regular Go. Like, if it was just for the throwing, that's fine, but why did you add motion controls? Why? Where, where are we going, Eevee? Oh. Oh. Please, please. No, no, no. no. Come on, come on, come on, come on, grab it, grab, grab, grab the berry! I can't, I can't grab the berry, I physically can't grab the berry, I'm gonna have to like, use the, you can't use the stick, the stick does nothing, listen, can you hear me? That, that's me rocking the stick. Please. I, I might actually have to use the Joy-Con. 
I, I literally might have to swap to the Joy-Con because this cannot do motion control. Like, I, I'm I'm kind of pointing it. I'm kind of pointing it at the Joy-Con. Spyro, put down the ball and use the Joy-Con. Who says the Joy-Con's going to be any better? Okay, yeah. It is literally, it is physically impossible with the ball. There's several times where, where I've had it. Like here. But I just, it just won't. Oh! We made progress. No, come on, we had it. We had it. We got it! We got it, boys! No! 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 No, the banana! The banana! We, we had it for a brief second. We were free. <sighs> For a second, we were free. Welcome to the Pokeball Plus experience. Right, down. Cross. Yeah. Pine anything will do. Pineapple. Look, I'll take the pineapple or the banana. We had it for a brief second. For a brief second, Dark. We actually had an item in our hand, and we nearly fed it. No, no, Moon. This is the review. This will go in the review. We will, we will, we will master the Pokeball. Which way do you want me to go? The berry. I'll take a berry. Please. We got it. Eat it. Eat it. Yes! We succeeded. Take a berry. It will return to the tray. Touch the screen. Move your finger back and forth. Top to okay. Yes. We 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 succeeded. They are crap. They are crap, Kamori. Holy shit! Oh, that was bad. That was awful. Dear God, was that painful. That was so damn bad. Like, I, I don't even understand how you can make motion controls that fucking awful. Coincidentally, I did go back and try that Pokemon and me thing with the motion controls of the Joy-Con, and it's still just as bad. Bad it is so bad. So just don't ever go into the Pokemon Play, pet your Pokemon, Pokemon and me bollocks area. Just just stay away from it. It doesn't affect the game anyway. Like y your Eevee being it's a special Eevee which we're about to come to. But you know, your Eevee or Pikachu loves you anyway and will do all of the extra dodgy things. So like, oh, you know, you dodged out of this attack. 
because it had an extra love stat or, or whatever. Like your Pokemon, your your partner Pokemon will still do all of the hey you dodged the attack because it loves you so much because it's your partner and it's got a special bond with you as well as other special features. <laughs> so yeah, don't don't just stay away from that thing because it is god awful to control and. You don't need to go anywhere near Pokemon and me. But in terms of the actual game game, like it does, or the, the actual game of throwing the ball at the Pokemon, that feels very nice and very natural. That works great. In terms of the rest of the game, though, it's so bad. It is boring. It is so boring, and I struggled to get through the game. It is just way too easy or way too annoying what i mean by both of these way too easy is the fact that every single trainer has been severely severely nerfed and your pokemon are so incredibly buffed that it's just there's no challenge it is zero difficulty and the fact that pokemon still has not put a difficulty slider in. It's the spinner. I, I know, but something tells me they're not going to add it in the eighth generation. But the fact that they still haven't had a difficulty slider is just, just no. Like, so let's take Misty for example. In the original Pokémon's, as you can see from these images on the screen. She had a much higher level than the one in Let's Go. Because they don't want you to fail. Your partner Pokemon, as well as the Mew that you get from the Pokeball Plus, have got a perfect set of six IVs. And you will never, ever, ever need any other Pokemon. I beat the game just, first of all, playing with Mew. But then I just, like, got bored with Mew. I, I thought, you know, it's it's fun to have a legendary for a gym or two. But I got bored with Mew. And I switched to my partner. You know, it's supposed to be Let's Go Eevee. So, let, let's go Eevee. And even that was boring. Because Eevee just steamrolls. They Even just catching a wild Pokemon. I caught a wild fucking Growlithe. And it just steamrolled everything because they have they have de-leveled every trainer so much that it's no challenge. And every time I wanted to go somewhere, I was getting annoyed that I had to fight trainers. Like at first, I thought that my annoyance would come from the catching of the Pokemon, you know, just kind of doing the Pokemon Go, throw the Pokeball thing, and that would get really repetitive. But it turns out it's the opposite. I was hella happy. I was so happy to actually go into the grass and throw the balls and rack up, like, a, a catch combo to get a shiny Pokemon, because, like, the more... The more you catch in a chain, the more likely you'll find a shiny. It's actually a lot better way of getting a shiny rather than the 1 in 2000 thing. So, I'm actually, like, enjoying myself catching these Pokemon. Just casually throwing the ball without having to battle with them. And, uh, racking up this catch combo. I'm having fun. And then I come to these trainers who I know I'm just going to wipe the floor with. Most of the time in one shot. And I'm just like... Oh, and there's one point where there's no tall grass. It's uh, routes 13, 14, and 15, which is south of Lavender Town. So you go down, you're at Lavender Town, you go down the waterway on route 13, and then you go across a little bit in the in this little wooden maze where there's a lot of bird trainers on route 15 or 16, and then you go across to Fuchsia City, and it's just pure trainers, and you're just going, dead, 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 and it's like, oh, please, I just want to get back to catching Pokemon, I just want to go back to catching Pokemon, rather than these weak-ass, one-shot annoyances, because y your Pokemon 
are A, just so overpowered, B, the trainers are nerfed, and C, XP share is on by default and you cannot switch it off at all. So even if you're actively trying to handicap yourself, you just won't be able to. EXP share will continue to level up your Pokemon. Your Pokemon will go crazy. And it's just like... Man, I really wish there was a harder difficulty. Why didn't you just add a difficulty slider? You blew it's gonna it's a spin-off. Oh well. So, yeah, this is what I mean by my, my critiques mean, mean nothing. But the biggest one, the one that really bored me, though, the one that everybody tries to argue with me to a flawed argument is the fact that you cannot evolve your starter. It's just like, oh, it's there. Yeah, you can put it away. You can put it in your box. It's not permanently attached to your team. But when you are playing with uh, Eevee, and you would like Vaporeon, which is the best evolution, which is proven by scientists that do actual science. And you can't. And it's like, well, why the fuck not? Ah. Oh. Because it can learn a water move, an electric move, and a fire move. Could you imagine a water Pokemon with a fire move? Well, actually, yes, I can. It's called Volcanoid or whatever the fuck this thing is. That is a water and fire type. It's a water Pokemon that has fucking flamethrower. So I don't see why Vaporeon, which is the best of the evolutions proven by scientists that do actual science also couldn't have flamethrower. Could you boy what about the electric? Could you imagine a water Pokemon using electric? Yeah, it's called Lantern. It's called this one. Yeah, it has Thunderbolt, so I don't see why the best evolution proven by scientists that do actual science couldn't have a goddamn thunder move. There's no reason that you can possibly give me why you can't evolve your starter. All the things about, oh, it can learn these moves. Well, guess what? It's a single player game. Nobody cares, right, Nintendo? Nobody cares when they're playing a single player game. My single player experience is being detrimented by the fact that I cannot evolve my Pokemon into the best evolution that is best by scientists that do actual science. And you know what? You know what? You can sit there and say, well, you were never meant to. But let me, let me show you a map right now to prove this is bollocks. So you've got all, all your Pokemon in their correct positions. You look at Pewter City and, and the, um the Mount Moon, and it's like, yeah, there's there's Aerodactyl over there, um, he's kind of at the exact area where that little um, fossil place is, you look at Mount Moon, yeah, there's Clefairies, Paris in Mount Moon, there's Geodude in Mount Moon, That that's all, you know, good, correct, I know Mew's up in the clouds there, but that's just because, where'd you put Mew, right, but then you look at Victory Road, uh, yeah, there's Moltres. I've seen Moltres in Victory Road. I've seen Arbox and Executors in Victory Road. I've seen Graveler in Victory Road. I've seen all these Pokemon. Maybe not Nidoqueen and Nidoking. I don't know what they're doing there. Maybe it's because of the Elite Four, because Bruno does have a Machamp and Laura Lee does have a Polyrath. But for the most part, I see all these in Victory Road. These our Pokemon. We look at the power plant area. Yes, Zapdos appears at the power plant. Uh, Onyx and Voltorb appear at the Dark Passage. You've got the three ghost Pokemon down in Lavenstown, as well as Cubone and Marowak, which Marowak is the... Uh, even if you can't catch it, you do see it there. So this all 
makes sense. All these Pokemon you do see in this area. But then you get to Pallet Town, right? You get to fucking Pallet Town. And oh, look! Eevee, Vaporeon, the best evolution done by scientists, Jolteon and Flareon. So at one point when you were making this art, you were saying, yes, it could evolve. It could become the greatest evolution that is proven by science, by scientists that do actual science. So, yeah, well, and the other thing, yeah, but taking it online. <laughs> yeah, take it online, sure. Sure, you're going to take it online. First of all, no, you're not. I'm going to tell you right now, no, you're not. This game uh, doesn't particularly work well with the online because the online is a load of shit, as you saw in my Smash Brothers review. It's just as laggy. It's just as crappy. So, no, it doesn't work with the online because nobody's fucking buying your online Nintendo. And second of all, even just to try and get into a battle, you can't just no longer go to the Pokemon Center and select I want to battle a friend. You have to connect to Nintendo's bullshit online and you have to like match pictures of the Pokemon you want to trade with or battle with. Well, what the fuck is this? And this, what is this? Uh, you can't see it, but I'm doing the... Uh, a, a what thing with my hands, like... Wh wh why? Why? What, what, what was wrong with going to the Pokemon Center and saying, I want to battle somebody? What, what's this fucking picture matching game? God damn, Nintendo. But again, all my criticisms fall by the wayside because it's just a spin-off. Doesn't matter. You can't criticize it because it's not a main game. I mean, I can. Because I paid the money for it, and it's not good. It's not good. It's it's an okay Pokemon game at best, but incredibly boring at worst, with so many flaws. Now, this is not to say that there aren't other positives that I can list off. The fact that TMs and HMs are gone, so you no longer have to have a HM slave, and it works a lot like Sun and Moon, where your partner Pokemon can learn like all the HMs as these secret techniques. That's great. That's fantastic. The fact that um, shinies are now a lot easier to get. You don't have to have this random one in 1000 chance with the, the Masuda egg breeding method to breed a shiny. Th that's gone, which is great. All these are great additions. The fact that egg breeding and IV breeding is gone in general is also great. Would I have liked them to scrap EVs and IVs completely? Yes. Yes, I would. But at the same time, they've made it so that eventually every single Pokemon can get max EVs and IVs via the things like the bottle caps and the candy and everything else. So while there are still EVs and IVs, they've been incredibly simplified, which is what they needed. And now it no longer comes down to who's got the better EV and IV Pokemon, because if both players are at level 100 and they've both done the bottle caps and the candies, then both of these Pikachus are exactly the same potential. They've both got the same EVs, they've both got the same IVs, and it comes more down to skill, which is a good thing. It's a good thing that it's a more skill-based system, rather than just like, oh, well, I've got six IVs uh, because I'm an egg breeder, and you've got, like, one IV because you just caught it in the wild, so I'm just gonna steamroll you. No, it's nice to see that it's all now very simplified, and the fact that you even as a casual person, can just get a, a catch combo to get a 6 IV and then just mess around with the candy and the bottle caps to get it to perfect EVs as well. So, that is great. That is so much of a nice improvement. So, there are 
really good improvements that they should carry over. They should carry over the Eevee and Ivy and No Egg breeding system, which I've heard they are doing. They should carry over the catch combo thing to make it easier to get a shiny Pokemon. They should carry over the... Um, Pokemon learning a secret technique rather than having a HM slave. These are great, fantastic additions, but there's just so many other things. The fact that it's way too easy to the point of boredom, where, you know, you say like, oh, well, it's for children. Even children would get bored with it. Like, you'd throw Pokeballs, but the thing with children is, even, like, children want some kind of challenge. Because if there's nothing to piss them off and ask their parents to do it, or they're stubborn enough to do it themselves, then they'll just go play Fortnite or something. They'll get bored. They'll get super bored because you're presenting nothing to them. You're presenting no challenge. Oh, but Spyro... Spyro, Spyro, Spyro. Yeah? Yeah? It gets... It gets challenging in the post-game with the Master Trainers. Oh yeah, the Master Trainers. Those things that Masuda literally said are just padding. What's this statement say about, about his investment in the game and how much you should care? If the developer couldn't even be asked to come up with any other way to make the game interesting than throwing hardcore padding into the game. That's not a good sign. And it, it, it kind of shows because there's also the thing of he's now stepped down as the Pokemon dude. So what does that say about some of the things that have happened with this game? So, yeah, th this is the last one, and it was a bit ranty, but it's a bit ranty because it's it's just vapid. It's it, it's empty. It's, it's soulless. It's just there to try and cash in on Pokemon Go, like, oh, Pokemon Go was popular. Let's make Let's Go, and let's also attach it to the, to the phone app and have that crappy 8th generation Pokemon that you can only get via the phone app even though you know not everybody has a $500 iPhone but eh, I'm not going to say anything about that but yeah it's it, it just feels very soulless like oh well what could we do we could make a remake of Pokemon Yellow again even though we've already had them in the forms of things like Fire Red and Leaf Green and let's just add the, the the Pokemon Go mechanic and try and cash in. And then let's let's make all these poor decisions of oh it's super casual, so let's make it as casual as possible by making it beyond zero difficulty where your partner is literally going to one shot every single battle and also the fact that your your partner has got six IVs and that they're nerfed. And then let's just, like, piss off all of the actual real fans. Like, the, the Pokemon fans that want to, like, get deep into it by making sure we add all these restrictions. Like, oh, you can't do Nuzlocks anymore because the Pokemon are all in the overworld. You can't do randomizers. You can't evolve your starter. And it, it just kind of makes it fall into this... Yeah, it's okay. It, it's a Pokemon game. It'll impress. It'll it'll have people being like, yeah. But for for most people, it'll it'll get boring really fast, and they'll just be like, eh, whatever. And when they find out that that Pikachu that they've got can't evolve into Raichu, or that Eevee that they've got can't evolve into the best evolution that Lana likes to cosplay because she has good taste. Well, then they're, gonna, they're also going to get annoyed. So, um, my final verdict for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee is... A... Okay... I guess, I, I don't know, 
for me, it was a 2 out of 5. It just got way... It had too many problems, and it got way too boring way fast. I mean, I, I guess, like, if I was being generous, because it has got some good innovative ideas, like how to catch shinies, and the fact that they have made the EVs and IVs so much easier to deal with, and the fact that you don't need an HM slave, I guess I could push it to a 3 out of 5. I mean, it does look and sound nice as well, so... Yeah, I guess I'm being a little bit too harsh, and it's a 3 out of 5. It's an average Pokemon game. It's okay. But it's it's not what people want. It's not what people are looking for. It's it is just a stopgap towards the eighth generation, and people there'll be people that are watching this and they'll be like, oh, so you say it's just another Pokemon game and you're coming up with all this bullshit like you can't evolve your starter. But well, that is bullshit. And I I know there's one of you listening to that. I know it's exactly the person that's listening to that and thinking. Wow, Spyro is just being a negative dragon right now. This is a good Pokemon game. But you're a Pokemon fan. To you, it might be. But to to a critic and to someone that has seen the good side of Pokemon, this just feels like a stopgap. It had some interesting ideas. And that's good. We always need a... This is something that I'm going to be bringing up when we come back to 76 in the new year. There is always going to be a bad game. But that game should be, shouldn't be bad because it played it too safe. It should be bad because it experimented and radicalised ideas. And there's some radical ideas in here like how they've destroyed egg breeding for this new Eevees and Ivy system. Some hate it, some love it. And some might mark it down for that, whereas I mark it up. But that was one of the, the radical ideas. That's one where it went to an extreme, to an experiment. Because you will never get anywhere without experimentation. And I'm going to reference in 76 one of my own games that a lot of people shit on, a lot of people hate, and it is, in its own right, a bad game, which is Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. I don't think we need to go over how Enter the Dragonfly is bad, but did you know Enter the Dragonfly personified the idea of how much of a legend I am? Enter the Dragonfly was the first of my games that introduced how, being the legendary purple dragon, I can breathe all elements, and Enter the Dragonfly was the first that gave me electric breath, fucking bubble breath, ice breath, fire breath, and, well, the rest of the game was shit. That one part of it, that experimentation, where you were like, we're gonna break from the norm. It's not just fire. It's all the elements. Total break from the norm. Everybody liked that. And and that carried over into the Legends series with Cinder and Malfour. Where I can breathe lightning. I can breathe ice. I can breathe a, a force of the earth. It carried over because it was such a good idea. It was a risky experiment. And overall... Enter the Dragonfly was a failure. Overall, the experiment was a failure, but the innovation of the multiple breaths came out of that failure. And the same could be said for Fallout 76. Overall, it's a complete disaster, but the multiplayer aspect, how to code um, multiple people to do a quest, you know, if you added co-op to Fallout 5, for example, all of the, the multiplayer aspects, the way that you can code a quest to multiple people in a team, the way that there is team quests, all of these radical ideas are good. These are the things that people like out of that shit, sh that shit show. These are the, the things that should be carried over to Starfield, to Elder Scrolls 6. This idea of co-op is good within the shit show. It's a failed experiment, but with a good innovation. 
and that's what I feel let's go is it's a failure of an experiment it's way too easy it plays it way too safe there's too many things about this experiment that are bad that are a failure or are just too safe like the whole idea of nerfing the trainers not having a hard mode why if you're going to have this much of a crazy experiment as to show the Pokemon in the overworld, remove the wild battles entirely so it's just the throne of the Pokeball. If you're going to change the formula that much, it doesn't matter if this game is that much of a failure. Just go all the way. Try everything. So when it comes to this generation that we're all having our own desires for, we're all having our own ideas for, even if this was a failure, you can take away from it all of these things from the experiment that works. Experimentation provides innovation or experimentation breeds innovation. And there is some innovation in here, but they didn't innovate enough. And that's that's why I got bored with it, because there was there was ideas, but there wasn't enough ideas. And being that we're eight generations in, the formula's got stale, it's got old, it's it's run its course, and people are looking for, for something new in Pokemon. That's why Pokemon Snap, that's why everybody requests Pokemon Snap, because it was something different. That's why everybody likes the Mystery Dungeon series, it's something different, it's a break from the, the, the norm, but even the norm has become too norm. The normal has become so normal that it, it's time for a change. The, the whole friendly rivals, the way that the eight gyms, it's too normal. Sun and Moon had a good idea with the trial captains. No longer gyms, but tests of, of skill or mini games or, or something harkening back to the Orange Islands. That's great. That was your first step into breaking the normality of the main series. These, like the, the way that you've done the IVs, the way that your partner Pokemon can learn secret techniques, these are also ways to break that normality into something new. So, we'll, we'll leave it at a 3 out of 5, because I'm rambling and I, I just want to try and convey... That to me, it's little more than than a stopgap that's way too easy and plays it way too safe. But hopefully, come next year, we will see all of these ideas. The trials from Sun and Moon, the, the catch combos and the IVs from Let's Go. We will see all of this taken and moulded into something good. And that's kind of what it has to do. Because people are, are starting to to fall off Pokemon. Even the main series is starting to get too formulaic. That's why a lot of streamers don't play the normal main series as the normal games anymore. They either do a Nuzlocke or a Randomizer. They need something to spice up. Because the normal formula has gotten too stale. So hopefully in the 8th generation... We will see it all culminate into what we've been wanting. We will see everything that, that is good about this game and Sun and Moon culminate into that, that spicy Mamma Mia that we are we are all looking for. So yeah, this, this is the last one. Uh, it was a stopgap um, and this is the last one of the year. And it's, uh, yeah, that, that's it. So join me next time. For the top 5 and bottom 5 of 2018. Where we're going we're gonna to be awarding the prizes and the, the not so good prizes. I don't know how to end it. But it's the one that everybody waits for in December. You know, you have these reviews close to the end of December. Christmas Day, Boxing Day. And you're like, yeah, you know, they're alright. But it, come on, it's the end of the year. Tell us what you think was the best of the best and the worst of the worst, and we will be doing that. So, next time, top five and bottom five 
But for now, if you enjoyed the review, uh, even if it was a little bit of a rambolic one, because it's just literally the last one that was squeezing in for the awards, do feel free to leave a like. Uh, if you don't want to miss out on the awards, then don't forget to subscribe. And there are links down below to my Twitter if you want to see what I'm tweeting, my Discord if you want to come in and talk to me, and my Patreon if you'd like to support me further. And uh, I will see all of you next time for the top five and bottom five of 2018 with Vaporeon that is the best evolution as proved by scientists that do actual science and the fact that Lana cosplays her because she has very good taste and very high standards. <laughs>